But what you can do right, is come about right out. here and uh, save status. Okay, so now every time I reset, I'm over here. And so what you're gonna do is uh, record Armika so that the first one she does is dash command throw. Uh, the next thing you're gonna record is drop kick. The next one you're gonna record is crouch light punch. And then the last one you're gonna record is jump forward heavy punch, like so. And then what the heck, I'm going to also program in a juke. I'm just gonna program her crouching like that. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. And if you actually turn them all on, what you end up in the situation, if I reset this like this, can I stop Mika? Jesus Christ! What's very important about this exercise is one, you will never win. You are gonna lose the, God damn it, what the hell was that? Yo! Ah ha ha, take that, oh God. Ah, Jesus. Now, what's important about this exercise is one, it's probably you are not going to win, you will lose. There's no way to win this situation. It's too hard to win, right? Because you have to be a god in order to stop all five of those options consistently, right? And you say to yourself, man, that, how do I win? Well, guess what? This is what you should be doing on offense. <laughs> this is what you should be doing on offense. So when I talked in first attack about attack vectors, this is an example of that. Mika has the attack vector of dash up command throw, drop kick, or jump at you. And because she has all three of those attack vectors, and if you mix between them and you find the proper, like dash jab and dash light kick and dash command throw are all the same vector because you're just dashing, right? That like they only have to look for dash. But dash versus jump versus drop kick are three different vectors. So in other words, when you're using your character, if you can't program this on your character, then your mix up probably isn't gonna work on anybody either. If you can set something like this up on your character and you can beat it consistently, it's not a real mix up. It's not a real thing. The idea to, the, the main takeaway from this is that if there is a human being that could stop all three of those attack vectors from Mika while not reacting to any of the jukes and fakes that I programmed into there, you have found someone who is exceptional and beyond human, right? Exceptional and beyond human. I don't care if you're punk, I don't care if you're Tokido, I don't care if you're knuckle dude. If you can stop all of that stuff, you're better than they are because that is almost humanly impossible to stop, which is why anyone who programs this will get their ass kicked by me by computer Mika. But again, the important takeaway from that is that is how you get in on your opponent is if he can't react to every single option. This is kind of the idea behind fighting games. People can't react to everything. So if you can't beat this Mika that does this, that means a lot of the opponents that you fight aren't gonna beat that with Mika as well. So if you can play Mika and you can walk up to them and do one of those three things at that magic distance, one, that's good because then you can get into that magic distance. That's good on you. And two, that means that you know how to take advantage of every one of those situations and turn it into a real mix up or you know get in for free and mix the opponent up. So this mix up, like I said, is not human reactable. So you're like, why isn't Mika so the best character then? Because even if you block the drop kick, she's plus on block and that sucks, right? So how do you actually beat this mix up? I'll show you how you beat this mix up. I'll show you exactly how you beat this mix up. This is how you beat the mix up. What the hell do I care about your mix up here? 
what the hell do I care about your mix up here? So again, I've talked a lot in my first attack episodes about distancing and spacing. You want to put yourself, so in other words, that mix up is super potent right here. It's super potent right here. So I want to be everywhere except right here. I want to be right here and applying pressure to her. I want to be here where the drop kick can miss or the dash isn't going to be far enough to command throw me. If I get put into this position so that she can just play this mix up on me over and over again, I'm making the mistake because I am standing in this position that is optimal for her. And this is what I mean by in fighting games, you have to understand the spacing and where characters have an advantage. I use the Kotaka Shoten versus Kurahashi Ryu versus Guile matchup in Super Turbo to illustrate this. How it's like advantage for one, advantage for the other character, advantage for one, advantage for the other character. You always want to try to stand in the space that's not there. But if you walk up to here and you block like this, you're going to die. Like any Mika is going to be able to beat you if you walk up and block right here. Every Mika is going to be able to beat you by just exerting that mix up. So block, walk away, and then, you know what What another way that a lot of people beat this mix-up is? Uh, let me show you what a lot of top players do to beat this mix-up. That's what a lot of top players do to beat that mix-up. Do you know how many times people V-reversal that drop kick from Armika? Top players drop kick, like V-reversal that every time. They will take one of the options that Mika has and use it as a way to knock her down and get her away and continue forward. Because that, that mix up right there is the most potent mix up for our Mika. The reason being is that if she actually gets in, but the problem is if I guess wrong and I block the drop kick, I am in another mix up. She goes from mix up to mix up because this, well not that, this into this beats your buttons. This into this will beat you blocking etc etc and so on and so forth so the problem is this sucks but what that means is that most mikas are going to lean towards this it's a weighted mix up the weight is good for landing drop kick because even if the opponent gets scared and block you get a mix up on them so what a lot of top players will do is they'll V-reversal that because they know people are going to lean into that option. So when they block it, they V-reversal it, knock Mika away, and try to live. And when they V-reversal her, even if they don't get pressure, they push you into a range where you're not in that mix-up anymore. <laughs> you just don't want to get into that mix-up anymore. And that's, that's, that's the whole point of V-reversaling her because now you can apply pressure to her and so on and so forth. So uh, that's how you beat that mix up against Mika is don't be at that range. If you can play neutral footsies strong enough so they're scared to but hit buttons so that you can walk into that range and then all of a sudden exact that mix up, great. If you walk up in them and they back off so they're not in the range, keep walking and push them to the corner so that they can't walk backwards anymore. So now they have to deal with that mix up unless they walk forward, which you're fine with because that means they'll walk into your buttons and so on and so forth. So again, fighting games is fighting the optimal range where your mix ups are the best. And then from that point forward, you can blow somebody up, but you have to get into that range essentially is how it all goes and stuff like that. So. That's kind of the, the whole thing. So again, the takeaway from these crazy training mode tricks like this is that uh, they work and they will work against almost every human. <laughs> Nobody is so good that they can react and get away from every single one of them. Uh, so that means you can do it too. But the reason why you'll play these characters and go, why can't I ever land this is because your opponent is better at controlling the distance and minimizing the times that they get put into this mix up.